Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy, in this video we are going to start ventricular rhythms. Ventricular rhythms include premature ventricular complexes, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. Now, in this video we are going to mainly focus on premature ventricular complexes. In the subsequent videos we will be talking about ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillations. Now, how does this ventricular rhythm arise? What does ventricular rhythm means? Now, in our heart, SA node is the basic pacemaker. It produces electrical currents and those electrical currents cause contraction of the atria. These electrical currents spread out to the AV nodes through the internodal pathways and AV node sends these signals through the bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers and then it causes contraction of the ventricles. That's how the heart beats. SA node is the basic pacemaker. Now, what if this SA node fails to produce the electrical current? What if the SA node fail? Then AV node takes the charge of the heart. AV nodes takes the responsibility of producing the electrical currents and AV nodes runs the electrical rhythms of the heart. What if AV node also fails to produce electrical rhythms? In such case, Purkinje fiber takes the charge of electrical activity and Purkinje fiber produce electrical currents that run the rhythms of the heart. But what if the Purkinje fiber also fails? If the Purkinje fiber fails, after that, ventricles start producing electrical currents and the ventricular tissue produces electrical current that causes contraction of the ventricle so that the blood keeps running throughout the body. That's such a beautiful mechanism of the body that we have almost four fail-safe mechanisms. But the last one is not a normal phenomena. When the ventricles take charge of the electrical activity, the things go wrong in the heart failure of atria and AV junction to initiate a beat results in electrical rhythms being generated from the ventricles. Those rhythms are called as ventricular rhythms. They include ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, premature ventricular complexes. Now, sometimes it happens that the ventricular tissue gets a myocardial infarction. The ventricular tissue gets ischemia. It gets damaged. And that damaged heart tissue, that damaged ventricular tissue produces these electrical currents and it fights with the SA node electrical activity. It fights with the SA node electrical activity and what happens in the fight between SA nodes and the ventricular rhythms? Heart suffer, the body suffers, patient can develop cardiac arrest and this, these situations are very lethal for the patient. Now, what is the morphology of ventricular rhythm? Morphology of ventricular rhythm is wide, bizarre looking waves. Remember, when SA nodes depolarizes, it gives you narrow waves, the sharp QRS complexes, the sharp waves. But when the ventricles take charge of the electrical activity of the heart, ventricles depolarize slowly. So, what you will see is that you will see wide QRS complexes. So, wide, bizarre looking waves. The T wave is opposite in direction to the R wave. Now, if this is a wide QRS complex greater than three small boxes on ECG and the T wave will be opposite, the T wave will be inverted. That is a classical feature of a ventricular contraction, ventricular pacemaker activity. The P waves will possibly be not visible. The P waves might be present, but since the ventricles are contracting at a fast pace and the ventricular rhythms are wide, they will hide the P waves. The QRS interval will be greater than 0.12 seconds because the QRS complex is wide because these are wide bizarre looking waves and it will be greater than three small boxes on ECG that's a wide QRS. Now this is a picture showing a normal sinus beat and it compares it with a ventricular beat. Now if you look at the normal beat this is P wave this is the narrow QRS complex and this is the T wave. This one over here is a ventricular beat and this ventricular beat is a wide bizarre wave and look at the T wave. The T wave is inverted and there is no P wave. This is a T wave of the previous beat but there is no P wave. The P wave is possibly hidden by this QRS complex. Now how do you measure QRS complex in these wide bizarre ventricular rhythms? Maybe the one lead might be showing more wide QRS complex and the other lead might be showing less wide QRS complex. 
in the interpretation you always choose the widest qrs complex and you label the widest qrs complex size now coming to premature ventricular complexes pvcs now what happens in premature ventricular complexes is that the sa node is normally firing and producing electrical currents and it is causing the heart to beat but in between that normal sinus rhythm a ventricular ectopic focus produces electrical currents and it disturbs the electrical activity of the heart it disturbs the electrical activity of sa node so a normal sinus rhythm is going on and in between an ectopic focus from the ventricles produces electrical currents and it disturbs the normal sinus rhythm that is called as a premature ventricular complex so premature ventricular complex is an ectopic beat that interrupts the normal rhythm of the heart now in this ecg these are the normal sinus beats that are going on this is another normal sinus beat and in between look over here this is the premature ventricular complex this is the disturbance in the normal rhythm the normal sinus rhythm the premature ventricular complex interrupts the normal rhythm now these premature ventricular complexes are caused by irritable focus in the ventricular wall that produces the electrical currents or in the conduction system or due to re-entry phenomena of the electrical currents where the current re-enters that ectopic focus and re-initiates another beat and that current then re-enters that, that ectopic focus and re-initiates a beat. Now basically these things are caused whenever myocardial tissue is damaged, whenever there is myocardial ischemia, whenever there is previous history of MI, those dead tissue, those damaged myocardial cells have the potential to produce these abnormal electrical rhythms and these electrical rhythms disturb the normal rhythms of the heart. Now what is the significance of premature ventricular complex? Now remember, a premature ventricular complex might be present on the ECG and patient may be totally asymptomatic, patient may be totally fine. The only finding would be that the patient will be having an irregular rhythm because these premature ventricular complexes are disturbing the normal rhythm, the normal beats of the heart. But the importance is that even if the patient is stable, you should go for workup that what is the problem, what is the pathology in the heart, what is the pathology in the ventricles because it can precipitate into a ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation which is lethal. And remember, it can also decrease the cardiac output. Now, if after every normal sinus beat, there is a premature ventricular complex and that premature ventricular complex does not cause a proper contraction of the heart, the blood will not be pumped out to the peripheral tissues. So, after every sinus beat, if there is a premature ventricular complex and that premature ventricular complex is not producing any cardiac output, so if the rate is 80 beats per minute, the actual heart rate is 40 beats per minute because the 40 beats are perfusing the body with blood. And those 40 beats of premature ventricular complexes are useless because they are not pushing the blood out from the heart. So it can decrease the cardiac output. Now this is a picture showing the premature ventricular complex wide bizarre wave with an inverted T wave. Now in this ECG, if you look, this is a normal sinus beat. This is a P wave, a narrow QRS complex. And it is followed by a wide QRS complex, a wide bizarre QRS complex. And that wide bizarre QRS is having an inverted T wave. So this is a premature ventricular contraction. This is another normal sinus beat which is followed by a premature ventricular contraction. And it goes on. So this is where a patient is having a normal beat and a premature ventricular complex. A normal beat, a premature ventricular complex. That is called as a bigeminal PVC. This is another ECG showing bigeminal PVC. We can easily spot, if you look at the rhythm strip over here, you can easily see this is a normal sinus beat with sharp narrow QRS complex. The narrow QRS complex is the one which has less than three small boxes in it. And look over here, this is a huge QRS complex, a wide bizarre QRS complex for, with an inverted T wave. A wide QRS complex with an inverted T wave. That is a, a premature ventricular contraction. This is a premature ventricular contraction. So every normal sinus beat is followed by a premature ventricular complex that is called as a bigeminal PVC. Now if after every two sinus beats there is a third PVC that is called as a trigeminal PVC. After every two sinus beats there is a third PVC that is called as a trigeminal PVC. If after every three sinus beats 
there is a PVC, a huge QRS complex that is called as a quadrigeminal PVC. Now, if you look at this ECG, in this ECG, you can look at these wide QRS complexes with inverted T waves. These are bizarre looking QRS complexes, wide QRS complexes. These are premature ventricular contractions and look how they are disturbing the normal rhythm. They disturb the normal sinus beat. Look at the RR interval over here. Look at the RR interval over here. So, they disturb the normal sinus rhythm. And if it is followed by three sinus beats, that is a quadrigeminal PVC. PVC couplet, if these QRS complexes are present together in a form of couple, that is called as a PVC couplet. Now, these two QRS complexes are PVCs. These two QRS complexes are PVCs. Now, let's solve some ECGs. Now, I've talked about heart rate calculation, regularity, P waves, PR interval, QRS complexes in detail in my video on rhythm determination. The link of that video is given in the description below. Now, as we discussed in that video that if the rhythm is irregular in ECG, what you do is that you calculate the heart rate in an irregular ECG by 6 second method. What you do in 6 second method is that you, calc you count 30 large boxes, you count the 30 large boxes and then within those 30 large boxes, you count the number of QRS complexes present. If the QRS complexes are let's say 8 and then you multiply the 8 with the number 10. So, the heart rate is 80 beats per minute. Now, in this ECG, since the ECG strip is short, what we will do is that we will count 15 large boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we will count the QRS complexes in it. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 QRS complexes. So, now we will multiply 4 by 2 since we have to calculate 30 large boxes but the strip is short so we have calculated 15. So, we will multiply the number with 2. So, 4 multiplied by 2 is 8 and then so this means that in the 30 large boxes we have 8 QRS complexes. Now, we will multiply this 8 to 10. So, 80 is the heart rate in this ECG. So, the heart rate in this ECG is 80 beats per minute regularity is irregular the p waves are present the p waves are married to the qrs complexes the p waves are normal there is no such p wave which is not followed by the qrs complex so p waves are present and they are married to the qrs complexes let's look at the pr interval so the pr interval starts from the start of p wave to the start of r wave so we have one two three four four small boxes each small box is equal to 0 0.04 seconds so 4 multiplied by 0 0.04 is 0 0.16 second and a normal PR interval is less than or equal to 0 0.20 seconds so this is a normal PR interval or you can simply remember that a normal PR interval is the one in which the PR interval is less than one large box that is a normal PR interval so this is one less than one large box wide now let's look at the QRS complex. The QRS complexes are narrow, sharp, angle, steep points. Let's look at the number of uh, uh, small boxes in the QRS complex. We have one, two, two small boxes in the QRS complex and uh, that is equal to 0 0.08 seconds. Less than three small boxes is a normal QRS complex. But in this ECG, we have an abnormal QRS complex and we have to mention that as well. So we have a PVC and the size of that PVC is 1, 2, 3, 4, almost 4 small boxes. So, it is a wide QRS complex, it is more than 3 small boxes. So, 4 into 0 0.04 is 0 0.16 second. So, the interpretation of this ECG is sinus rhythm. There is a sinus rhythm, but it is interrupted with PVC. The interpretation of this rhythm is not just premature ventricular contraction. The interpretation is sinus rhythm with a premature ventricular contraction. Now, what you should do is that you should pause the video, take a piece of paper and a pencil and solve this ECG. You should solve these ECGs yourself. If you want to take help, you should uh, uh, go on my video on rhythm determination and you check that how to calculate heart rate regularity. I have talked about them in detail. Now, let's calculate the heart rate. Now, this is an irregular ECG. An irregular ECG heart rate is calculated by the 6 second method in which you have to calculate the number of QRS complexes in the duration of 30 large boxes. So, let's calculate the 30 large boxes. I have already pointed out the 
I have already marked it on ECG. This is a 15 large box interval. This is a 15 large box interval. So this is a 30 large box interval. In that 30 large box interval, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 QRS complexes. So 6 QRS complexes in 30 large box distance, 6 is to be multiplied by 10. 6 multiplied by 10 is 60 beats per minute. So that's the 6 second method. So the heart rate is 60 beats per minute. The regularity is irregular. The P waves are present. Now, if you look at this small, this is less prominent P wave, but P waves are there. If you focus on it, this is a small P wave. This is a small P wave. Over here, it's more prominent. Over here, it's more prominent. So these are the P waves. They are followed by the QRS complexes. They are married to the QRS complexes. Now, let's look at the PR interval. Let's count the small boxes in the PR interval. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 small boxes. So, it is 0 0.16 second. Let's look at the QRS complex. The QRS complexes are narrow, sharp angles, steep points. 1 large box wide. So, it is 0 0.04 seconds. A normal QRS complex. But with this normal QRS complex, we also have PVCs. The abnormal, bizarre, wide QRS complexes. Let's look at the number of uh, small boxes in these PVCs. We have 1, 2, 3 and more than almost more than 3 small boxes. So we have 0 0.12 seconds. Less than 3 is a normal QRS complexes. 3 or more than 3 is a wide QRS complex. The interpretation of this ECG is sinus rhythm with premature ventricular contraction. Now, let's solve this ECG. Let's calculate the heart rate by 6 second method. This is a 15 large box interval. Since the ECG strip is short, we will calculate 15. Then we will multiply it by 2 so that we get a 30 uh, large box interval. And after that, we will count the QRS complexes and multiply it by 10. That is the 6 second method. Now, let's count the QRS complexes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. So, 8 uh, uh, QRS complexes are present in 30 uh, large box interval and 8 multiplied by 10 is 80 beats per minute. So, we have 80 beats per minute heart rate, the regularity is irregular, P waves are present. These are the P waves, they are married to the QRS complexes. They are followed by the QRS complexes. Let's look at the PR interval. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, almost 4 uh, small boxes wide. So, 0 0.16 second. Let's look at the QR. A QRS interval. The QRS interval over here looks wide. The, the sinus beats are having a wide QRS complexes. So we have 1, 2, 3, almost 3 uh, small boxes. That's actually a wide QRS complex, 0 0.12 seconds. Let's look at the PVCs. The PVCs 1, 2, 3. So that is 0 0.12 seconds. The interpretation of this ECG is sinus rhythm with premature ventricular contractions. Now coming to the management of premature ventricular contractions. Remember as I said that the patient might be asymptomatic and the patient ECG might show premature ventricular contractions. Most patients even do not require treatment but premature uh, ventricular complexes if they appear on ECG that person must receive an echo that person should get an echocardiography to look at the cardiac defects that are causing these premature ventricular contractions. You look you identify the pathology and you treat the underlying disease. If the patient is symptomatic, if there is very rapid heart rate in such situations, what you can use is that you can use beta blockers, but you do not use beta blockers in patients who are asthmatic. If the beta blockers fail, then you can do catheter ablation, whatever the ectopic focus is producing those uh, ectopic electrical currents, you ablate that, you burn that ectopic focus. Before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button. We talked about what is ventricular rhythm, we talked about morphologies of ventricular rhythm. We talked about premature ventricular complexes, their origin, what are they are caused by, their significance, bigeminal PVCs, trigeminal PVCs, quadrigeminal PVCs, PVC couplets and the management of premature ventricular complexes. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy video series. The link of that series is given in the description below. Thank you very much.